People either absolutely adore the book or they absolutely hate it beyond the worst dream that anyone ever had. And those critics who hate it say, how dare I write in Emily Dickinson's voice? What do I know about Emily Dickinson, et cetera, et cetera. And then you discover that those people who like it the least have never read her letters and don't really know that much about Emily Dickinson's life. I mean, she wasn't a recluse. She wasn't the old maid of Amherst. That's just a lot of bull. She was profoundly intelligent, much more intelligent than anyone around her, including all the males around her. And this is where her problems began, because those male critics who tried to interpret her work didn't understand a word of what she was saying. People who cannot fit into their own cultures often are split in some way, often can sort of find a music that allows them, some, that soothes them in some way. And I would say that uh, Emily Dickinson wrote to be soothed. Her father, he has the greatest American poet living in his own household, doesn't know it, and when he talks about his son, Austin, he compares him to Shakespeare, okay? That's it, it, to show you how invisible she was in her own culture. It seems that most critics really want to deny her a sexuality. And also, the other thing is, how dare a man write from a woman's point of view? It's all right for women to write from a male's point of view, but it doesn't seem to be all right from a man to write, for a man to write for a woman's point of view. Was Emily Dickinson gay? I mean, that's what everyone seemed to want to know. What was her sexuality? Well, how the hell do I know what her sexuality was? I'm sorry. No, okay. The only thing I can say is that she was androgynous, okay? And that as a writer, she had to assume the sensibility of a male and a female, as most writers do. You really write when you're dreaming. You know, your dreams really do the writing for you. You know, it's, the, the music comes in very, very strange fashion. Yeah, but the other problem is that you could rewrite the same book your whole life. I mean, you know, there are always sentences that you wish you had changed. You know, so at some point, it becomes a graveyard and you have to go on. I was given some kind of brain scan about five years ago, and the woman who gave, gave me the scan said, there's so much activity, explosion inside your brain that I don't know what it's all about. She said, I've never seen... You know, I, I, she didn't mean this positively. She meant to say as if I were cursed, but she said, there's, re there's an explosion inside your head, and I don't know what's going on. Well, maybe it's a necessary explosion. 